late twists in matches. It's just been absolutely wonderful. We've still got two matches to go. Starting with this, the second semi-final. Yeah, and probably James' worst hit on the one the entire tournament. He's broke the balls well, not always with the results, but overall pretty solid with, on the breaking end. And hats off to Neil's fan. Uh, he's, he hung tough. He played great, had an exceptional tournament. I know Neil's will be a little upset about it going, you know, the next day or two, right? But he'll get on with it. But what about Kachi? We always knew the physical presence, of course, was there and one of the best in the game. But, man, between the ears, he really showed us something there. I always say from one tournament to the next, from one match to the next, you don't know which Kachi is going to show up. But we even saw it within the same match there and two entirely different phases. It was up to 6 0, and then there was everything that followed. And he's in the final. Wow, oh, what an opener here. Especially at the light speed, so that's some confidence. I knew he had somewhat of a backdoor safety if he missed, but yeah, and maybe, you know, I've always wanted to talk to Kachi ever since it was really the first time I saw him, 17 or 18 years old. I actually went up to him and told him your brute future is very bright. I just thought the specimen he was uh, almost gave him an unfair advantage it seems like but I think he's just maturing in all ways and uh, it's going to it's going to really do him some favors in the years to come. I think we sometimes forget just how young he is because yeah. he's been around for so long. Still only 24. I keep having to check that because I can't quite believe it. But yeah, he was born in 1999. Oh, he showed us you know, as they say in America, some of that vinegar that the young. Oh, look at this shot to bring in behind them, behind the balls. He's going to leave a pretty doable jump, maybe even a doable kick. But I mean, I think it was 19 years old where Kachi uh, claimed the number one ranking in the world. I mean, that's awfully young and hasn't been done very many times. They should make this one. Cue ball's going to have some speed. Maybe gets into a piece of the seven. And he could never slow it down. He needed some contact there. What was that expression you used? Got some vinegar. Yeah. Well, it's just uh, full of vinegar. You know, the young guys. That's just, uh, I guess, an American saying. I'm not sure really where it came from, but. Oh, I like that one. I'll be stealing that for future use. Okay, a little kick shot. He would like to edge this, I think, and run the ball. Oh, he's just going to take a chance of getting a little fortunate. He may have. Sometimes when you don't like a kick shot, you know, kind of rolling the dice is your best option. Now, most of us would think that it would serve James well to get some shots early, right, to get the arm going. But the same thing with Co. So these are big balls. Co Ping Yi, the eldest of the three pool playing brothers, along with Co Ping Chung and Co Ping Han. He'll be 34 on the last day of this month. And the highlight of his career so far was becoming world champion eight years ago. <coughs> And you think about the pool world, right? Think about a guy like Co. Of course, think about that world title, and you're like, and like for Niels, for instance. Of course, Niels has some world pool masters, but think about the U.S. Open that they're lacking, right? That's what they really want. But that's all changing. Of course, the U.S. Open and the World Nine Ball are going to remain the biggest, and the, as they should. But so many events on the calendar coming that are, you know going to be titles that aren't going to be forgotten. Yeah, there's not much difference, really, in terms of the difficulty and what you have to do to win them. Now, when you look at new events like the UK, the European, Spanish that's going to be starting next month, the test is pretty similar, really, to what it takes to win a World or a US Open. Yeah, absolutely. Those two just add that extra in everyone's mind. And of course, the arm feels it probably a little more, but the Whirlpool Masters up there just because the quality of the field and none better than 2023.
right, just a little stun. This is where you don't get too involved trying to get the cue ball out a little further. Just work a little harder on it. Right? semi-finalist in the World Masters before. Looking to get to the final for the first time. He's won the first rack. Oh. Now, we had a word with him before the off. First match, I play very good. And second match with Shen, I play so-so. Not, not well, not, not bad. <laughs> and I hope I can play good in the semi-final. Of course, I feel very happy now. And my next round, my opponent is James. Last year, we met in Singapore Open in the final, and we both play well. So I hope we can play well again. I feel I can win this match okay, into the final. Yes, I think I can win World Master this year. <laughs> if he does get through to the final, his route will have taken him past three different opponents from three different continents. And it will be a big landmark moment for him, really, in terms of re-establishing himself. We didn't see much of him, even as Open tournament action was starting to reopen right after the worst of COVID. It took him a while to get back on the international stage. And that return to the big arena will be complete if he can win the World Masters tonight. Got to get to the final first though, but he's made a start. Well, we'll see about the results, but he'd like to bottle that hit on the one. That was just ideal. I think the pink four is back on the nine ball, but not really playable combination. We'll see here shortly. Now, he's got a cut shot on the two to the upper left corner. He's got one to the upper right as well. I'm wondering if if the pink four does bank cross side by the eight. He's gonna play the blue two in the upper right. Man, that overhead tells me the, the bank shot on the pink four really not on. So he must have a combination that's playable here. Now this type of combination by extension, please. You don't want to apply any side spin here. A lot of times when you cut a ball, you use a little outside spin. Here it would be left spin to enhance the cut or, or make the cut happen. But when you're playing this type of combination, when they're close together, the nine a lot of times will hit the bottom rail if you apply side spin. So you want to stay on the vertical, just straight up and down with the cue ball. And he's hitting a little left. I can see it. So good chance the nine hits the bottom rail. Yeah, he made it though. Quick kill in the second rack. The second he's applying the early pressure here to James Aranis. Four nine combination brings up two nil. Well, here it is again. Yeah, you can see the nine kind of twist off contact. Did get the bottom part of the pocket, and now a 2 nothing lead. Both trying to get to the final, as we've said, for the first time. But Ko, of course, has achieved so much more on the big stage. He's been a world champion. It's a much bigger landmark for Aranis if he gets to the final. Huge deal for him to even have reached this stage. So how important is it to him now to get his first rack on the board quickly? Because really, if Aranis was to find himself a lot of racks behind, he's spoken this week about nerves, and he'll feel them very strongly if he has a big deficit. 
Yeah, I think so. But I mean, it could work the opposite. It depends on how that deficit comes about, Michael. The if he makes some mistakes, break, yes, he's going to have trouble to coming back, I think. But if Co puts a few racks together, it may lighten the load on James just because he is in a deficit and he really hasn't done a whole lot wrong. So okay. we'll see. Yep, fair point. 2 0 at the moment. Okay, not the break off he had in the last. Missed the one barely in the side pocket. And this is where James has got to capitalize when they're really open. He's got a good starter. He's got a chance to get the arm going. I think the real problem for James, and I don't know how it is in sports, of course, in the UK as much, but, you know, in like college football or, or, or any football, right? A lot of times when, when one team plays another, the second time around, it's hard to beat that team again. And what I'm getting at is Co rarely plays two so-so matches in a row, and he played kind of a so-so match last night. You just don't expect to see that happen again. Yeah, that was his quarterfinal against Shane Van Boney. The one seven all. Sorry, Jeremy. I was just going to wrap that up by saying that from seven all, Cole pulled away with four in a row for the match. And the one, another good thing on James's side is I think he's very comfortable with his opponent. They played many times. They seem to get along really well. Of course, two of the nicest guys there are. Now here, don't get too involved. The pink four does go by the purple five in the lower right. So don't get too involved trying to move the cue ball. Extension, please. Gonna move it, it looks like. Trying to come some three rails around, maybe to where he's at now. Oh, he spun it with inside. Now he's a little thin. He's got to deal with a little bit of traffic. And you could see he just didn't want to take on the four in the lower right corner. That's not the best sign for me. This looks fairly natural, though. Should hit the side cushion and rail and just kind of float up in between the purple five. The brown seven. Maybe a little check side spin. And the thing is, you know, when you get in these spots, you know, when you play good position, it kind of simplifies the game, right? But you can't try to oversimplify it. You can't let the you know, the situation say, hey, let me try and make the shot as easy on myself as possible. Oh, a little kick there. It's going to slow down the cue ball. He's not going to get the snooker. I said it after the last match that I was to Carl, I think. I was so impressed at how confident the stroke was, uh, Kachi especially, uh, as the pressure got its highest towards the end of that last match. Neils as well. It's been a bit of a theme, actually. We've seen a lot of close matches this week, but in many of them, it's been won by the guy who's actually maybe stepped it up a level and produced his very best at the end of the match. And the pressure's at its most intense. Now, what's he done here? Yeah, he caught a double kiss on the cue ball. Just lost a little focus. Now, this is a big, big shot for James, in my opinion. It's got some distance. It requires a stroke, whether you're going forward or backwards with the cue ball. This purple five could go a long ways. Well, early signs of anxiety from both players. We saw it in Coe's reaction to his previous shot, and then in that shot itself from Moranis, some way out. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's going to do here. This is a very difficult little situation. And what happens, a lot of people would say, well, he aimed wrong. Well, you just don't think that about the pros. They don't aim wrong. It's just, you know, when you don't have that release of the cue, the timing's off a little bit, that's what causes those those big misses. 
I'd like to know what Ko was trying there, to be honest with you. Just see it in his body language. He's desperate to get that first rack on the board. Had a chance earlier in this rack. Five ball was his nemesis. It's got him back in now with a more clear cut opportunity. Yeah, and you picked it out quickly there. What you can't do, right? You can't stress over every shot. You're gonna have too many stressful situations anyway, so you just gotta do your best to relax and start swinging the cue. Well, little stress here on the black eight. He's going to have some speed on the cue ball, so he's either got to slow it down with some maybe some spin of some sort or maybe float this ball in. Nice shot. Well, when he came to the table after Coe's dry break, Moranis looked to have a pretty routine path to the line. Made much harder work of this rack than he really should have done. But at this early stage of one of the biggest matches of his life, the key thing was to win it. He's off and running now. He trails 2 1. Well, even though he beat Viktor Zelinski yesterday in the quarterfinals, it was pretty much 50 50 throughout the match that James Oranis was going to break dry. He's already done it once in this match. We're going to see him breaking again in a moment after he won the third rack. Pinyi leading 2 1, just waiting for his opponent to re enter the arena, which he has now done. We could see how anxious he was to get that first one on the board now, Jeremy. Activity Do you think he'll be Frank. more settled, or is it still going to be such a big occasion for him that it's going to take time to do that? No, I mean, I, th I, th I think he's definitely going to be more settled, just getting to knock a few balls in, getting on the board. Definitely, I don't really know what went wrong in the first rack as far as the break, but they certainly didn't know. Yeah, the, the one's hitting way short. It's like he's hitting way up high on the cue ball, maybe. On this type of shot, most of the players will draw the ball. And if you come up, what happens is you get a little more force on the cue ball, and it pushes the one through that, that rack a little bit and hits shy of that side pocket. Watch how short the one is here the sides so he's got to he's got to get that fixed yeah, kind of got away with the low percentage on the breaks yesterday because Zelinski was struggling so much and feel he'll get away with it two days in a row and this man is in the other chair today well I think yesterday it was fair to say that our, our tighter side pockets had a little something to do with it many times James hit both jaws with the one and and that's just the result of tougher equipment Big position play here. A lot of traffic, and he could easily trap himself. Trying to come back near this side where he's at. Oh, this is perfect. And this is the co I'm used to, just a really magnificent cue ball. And sometimes his cue ball is so good, it's, you know, you forget how great a shot maker he is as well. He's had the only real landslide victory of the week, beating Jason yeah, Shaw 9-1. I mean, as we've said, it was a very different match against Shane Van Boning. They were level at 1-all, 2-all, 3-all, 4-all. And he went 7-4 in front. Van Boning came back to 7-all. And SVB's first dry break of the match in the next rack just opened the door for Coe to start getting back on top again, and he did, pulling away from there to win 11-7. Uh, he's gotten snookered from nowhere here, and he had a few different routes and, and took a little time. I was actually going to comment that that was one thing yesterday I saw a little different. This Coe's never been labeled as a slow player, but I thought yesterday he actually played a little fast around the table.
great jumper of the ball. Well, these are difficult shots that's coming up for James, but they're ones that can do him a lot of good if he can knock them in. That will really one of the best strokes you'll see, James, once it gets tuned in. This is where if he knows the slick table I think he can come back between the black eight and the nine two rails and kind of spread the cue ball off the second rail towards the upper right part of the table touch, not please. something you can do on your club table really but if you know the slick cloth it's certainly playable now inside English I don't know if he can get above the brown seven Yeah, this is my worry. Is he going into the seven? That's that's the problem. Thirty one years of age. Rank number seventy five in the world, but a lot of that is down to a lack of involvement in tournaments over the last year or two. He's had various issues with travel and visas. I think the fact that he was given a wild card with that lowly ranking tells you a lot about how highly rated he is in the game. Oh, an awful flick, but it actually ended up being okay. I don't think he would have got off that second rail up for a position on the six, so nothing's been easy so far, but again, it can go a long ways if he gets out. Tricky shot here. He's going to play it to what we call blind pocket, the upper right. He's going to go with a high ball, three rails. You can see now once he starts to settle in a little bit, really nice flow in the stroke. Grant gets a lot out of the ball. It's just been a little out of line on every shot. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz and Victor Zelinski. And ahead of this match, we spoke to him. I feel great. You know, I'm still grinding and happy for that I survived. My match against Francisco, yeah, I was feeling really nervous. There's nothing I can do. I just have to fight to, to win the match. I'm so happy, of course. Beating him is a good memory for me especially here at the Whirlpool Master. I'm comfortable today, and I played before with the Copigny. He already beat me twice, and I'm hoping I can get this one. I will try my very best for, uh, for my country. I know it's gonna be hard for me, but it is what it is. Just good luck to us. I just need to win this first, and then we'll see how does it feel after if I beat him. Remarkably, he's the first player from the Philippines to reach the semi-finals of this prestigious event for 11 years. The fifth rack. He's had two breaks so break. far in this match, both dry. Yes, he is on level terms. With his much more experienced opponent. Aaron Ass with the break again in rack five. Well, I don't know if you noticed, he kind of put the cue ball on the left side of the box and went over to the right. So a little scratch in his head early with the break shot. And he's hitting up on the cue ball. It's like a flat ball, so. Yeah, 
not a pleasant stat for him to read and he's level at the moment but can he really hope to win the match if he keeps breaking dry well i mean you know one of the big things about the break rule is there's so much difference from rack to rack with the layouts and stuff so you know if he keeps playing well you don't figure him to be able to hold up without making balls on the break but you just never know i mean you have to play an exceptional match after the break i'll tell you that yeah it's the sort of thing that tends to catch up with you eventually yeah and it looks like ko's gonna attack on another thin yellow one ball should come three rails on the back side of the pink and then out to the center for the two ball i said this quite thick May get a roll. Did get the snooker, but James, a big favorite to make this jump. Especially with the two just kind of laying there for shape. shot here being elevated over the six is probably more difficult than the jump and that's not that's a sign that he's a lot calmer than you would think because most of the time when the nerves are really high it's very easy to over hit the jump shot because you're just a little worried about getting over it you know play Ko Pin Yi in a big match not so long ago the Asian Open in Singapore last summer which will be a full-scale match room world ranking event later this year they met in the final of that and Alvarez pushed Co very hard before losing 13-11 and he got a little flat here I think he's got a touch of an angle but when you're going into the side it's always that full hit so it's very hard to come all the way across on the right side of the eight, the black eight, to get on this combination with the purple five and the brown seven. Not saying he can't do it, but you almost have to creep it across. If you overhit it, it just won't get there. He's got a kind of stun follow. You see how it hooked? And he, he may get there, but that I don't think was the intended route to the top rail. Okay, big shot here. Make sure you get the draw on the ball. That way you can hold position for the purple five after the combination's made. Michael, it looked like he kind of shot between there. He didn't really roll it, and he didn't really draw it. Yeah, I can see what you mean. There's a different angle on us. And any combination from that distance is, isn't a hanger or anything, but definitely. You know, James was a big favorite to make that combination. Should be able to kick this and get the five to the top rail, the purple five. It's close enough to it to really gauge the accuracy on the hit. Little draw stroke and the speed should be okay. Did hold the ball. He's going to leave a tough one, long one. best I've ever seen I think with the long shot when it's a full hit a lot of players would actually like to have more of that little cut on the ball it's just it gives you a little more reference right and the cue ball moves easier
Another thing is a lot of players, myself included, tend to overhit the ball when they get that much distance, and you could tell he stayed real smooth through impact. Yep. And that shot should, in a sense, be a rack winner. It's in the semi-finals for the second year in a row. Beat his brother, Ko Ping Chung, in an absolute slog of a first round match last year, then knocked out David O'Kady, Max Lechner, both quite comfortably, and was beaten in the last four by the eventual champion, Joshua Filler. And it's the first player from Chinese Taipei to get that far in five years. Won the first two racks. Got pegged back to two apiece. Okay. Back into the lead. Now three racks to two in this second semi-final of the World Masters. One of the longest established events in the game. Started 30 years ago this year, but so many new events coming up in the game nowadays. And you can see some of them there will be at the Copper Box in a couple of weeks' time for the UK Open. Wonderful inaugural staging last year. And it will be the first ever staging of the Spanish Open then in Lugo, just a few weeks after that. That'll be followed in the same venue by the World Cup of Pool, Spain defending on home soil. A couple of junior events running alongside some of those big tournaments. The European Open, which was also staged for the first time last year, will be going back to Fulda. And the last six days in September, will be in Atlantic City for the US Open. The Asian Open then will follow pretty quickly after that venue yet to be confirmed and we do know the venue for the Moscone Cup Alexandra Palace once again as Europe look to make it four in a row from the 6th of December Rack 6 Cup need to break leading 3-2 sure what has changed so much but the one hit pretty low there as well and Ko just hasn't broke the balls you know well since his first match or at times he has but not anything like his first match where just everything he did was on point well it's catching because we've had six breaks now in this match and five of them dry yeah, and pool players really Kind of live and breathe off the break, it gets you going. The shot here, this is a little tricky. Yeah, this is going to be difficult, but he. Oh no, that, that shot there. It's a shot I try to stay away from if possible. I think most players do, just maybe limited options for James in that situation. Left a sliver of the one. And it's 
just going to edge this, try and use the three a little bit to hold the one up, but he really got to make a decision where he's going with the cue ball. Could leave a long, thin cut on the one ball. Oh, smart shot. So accustomed in so many of the events nowadays, Jeremy, with these massive fields and so many tables, there's just noise going on everywhere and the click of balls everywhere you you can look around. This one table situation throughout the week, it just creates so much tension surrounding every match from round one. Yeah, you can exactly right, Mike. On I, I think the fans feel it. Certainly the players feel it. I think you and I as well here in the booth and Pretty sweet to me, though. Definitely like the tension, the suspense. Now, that's a prime example. Co very, very good with the jump cue, but in my opinion, definitely overhit that a little bit. It wasn't hard to get over the two, and he was very straight. So lost a little accuracy. Opener on the one gets even two tougher here on the two. Pro's ball trying to come backwards with the cue ball seems to want to pull the two off the rail just a bit more. If he could get back into the eight, that would be pretty good. Oh, he hit that sweet. That ball's off the rail a little bit. Of course, they're supposed to make it, but that froze ball, like I said, coming backwards. So good signs for James Aranis. You might have noticed there one of the logos on his shirt says Roy's. And of course, that's a very special place you know a lot about that's been a big part of the story of James Aranis. Yeah, when he first came to the States, uh, Roy at Roy's basement who does a lot for the game and does a lot for players and of course being Filipino has a heavy heart for his countrymen. Many players stayed up there in the DC area, North Virginia. I've actually never had the privilege, but I've seen it many times on streams and different stuff and that was yep. uh Kind of from nowhere. He said it kind of kicked on him a little bit. And now definitely out of line from a very easy position. I think he's okay as far as pocketing the ball. It's not easy. The problem with this is when you get out of line and you miss hit it to the pocket a little bit, the speed is off. And now the eight could be a tough one. Like here. See how the eight, we're going to be way over here with the cue ball now. Now the eight's a lot more of a tester because of the shot on the green six. The pressure on any shot is intensified when you know really you shouldn't have put yourself in that position. But he's come through those two tests there. And it all culminates in a routine nine ball. With which James Aranas levels again. At three each. Thank Race you. To 11. Frank. See who plays excellent catchy break. in the final Free tonight. Rankage.
Well, that was a bit different. Yeah, he still hit a, a little high on the cue ball, but put a little extra into it. Made four on the break. Has a pretty nice shot on the yellow one. Tr trying to figure out what ball's next. It looks like the blue two. So many disappeared on that break. Just gotta make it come across. And he's definitely getting more settled. Is he gonna get away from the green six? He's got a little to the left side of the cue ball, but of course it, he's got enough of the left side. But shooting beside the ball can sometimes be just as awkward. Extension, please. As shooting over the ball, and he's a bit of both. Now the tendency when you're beside the ball and you have to put left English like this is to push the cue ball a little bit and you tend to hit this two ball a little thick. Right. He's feeling better, Michael. I was going to say, do you think he's settled in now? And this is an ideal rack if he can finish it out from here. Very quick kill. Well... You know, he's a great player, right? And it'd be hard to hard to figure he hasn't learned from his nerves the first two days. And, and uh, that's a big part of it. I commented earlier that Niels is such a veteran. You know, he, he kind of knows how to play when he's a little overly nervous as well. Uh-oh, that in rail boinged a little bit. And get a little thinner on the nine, but should be okay. I guess we can say he's now averaged one ball on the break per rack. Made up a lot of lost ground in that statistical department with one shot. I wonder if the corner pocket, it looks like he should be okay coming two rails. Now he leads for the first time in this semi final. 4 3. help him having those guys in the corner over there with the Philippines flag gene them up absolutely been a lot of places Michael and I don't know if any country smiles more than the Philippines I was thinking that exact thing it seems it doesn't really matter what's happening on the table those guys there are smiling all the way through all of his matches absolutely yeah they just appreciate what's going on and Happy their countrymen's fight. So much history for the Philippines in this World Masters. They've had three past winners, Francisco Bustamante, Dennis Orcalio, and Alex Pagalayan won it as well back in 2008, and he was still representing the Philippines back then, now, of course, a Canadian citizen. Yeah, Marcel working the rack. They don't get enough credit. Marcel and Dez do such a, a great job. Of course, Brendan in the behind the scenes as our tournament director. Along with all the staff here, Matchroom and Sky Sports. The eighth break. James Aranis. James Aranis to break. Doing himself a lot of credit. Leading by four ranks to Remember, he was 2 0 down. He's starting to dominate. Like he changed sides, that's for sure. He's going to get a cut shot on the two if the black eight doesn't disagree. That's exactly what's happened. Shot called. I might clip the three here and just lay it on the side rail near the seven, making the seven difficult and the three difficult. It's your choice, Pinyi. You? I kind of did the same with the cue ball to the end rail. This is this probably gets passed back here. This is not an easy safety. Two's near that cushion, so a double Please kiss again, is a, could be a big problem, but I, I really doubt Co takes it. 
guess James is going to float the two, trying to use the eight, the black eight, for the cue ball. Oh, nicely done. Talking about the record of the Philippines in this tournament. Incredibly, no one from Chinese Taipei has won it. They've only had one finalist, and that was 20 years ago. The strokes get more confident. It seems like every minute at the table, and what's been so impressive to settle these nerves, it's been a lot of tough shots for James. Nothing easy. Yeah, you don't want to face them, but then when you come through them, it gives you such a boost in your cue arm. Well, we talked about it at the beginning, right? When you can't simplify the shot, maybe it's the best thing for you. Got to let the stroke out a bit. Okay, does he move two rails here with the black eight maybe in the way? And just pull the cue ball out, take a little longer shot on the green six. Extension, please. Yeah, if the eight wasn't there, the black eight, he would certainly stun two rails across, getting a little closer to the green six, but. Maybe going forward here. That's way light. And that's not the speed or line he wanted. He, he, he went forward trying to get closer to the six, so a little let up on the swing. Maybe a little indecisive as well. think he's too unhappy the way he struck it just a missed shot wasn't easy and it's a main goal I'm very shocked that he stunned the ball there because you don't have to get back for the eight you can play the eight from this side of the table as long as you're across. I thought he would just hit a high ball there on the green six, get to the middle of the table, take a little cut shot on the seven, knowing the eight's not that hard. Now he's got to let the stroke out. Extension, please. It, trying to get a little something out of the cue ball. And Co has just let a few situations get away. And, whew, is he going to cut this in the upper left, Michael? Wow. Wow. That looks extremely tough. Yes. Normally, edge on edge, you don't want to spin this one in. From that angle, you think that's not even possible. But it was, and Copenhagen stemmed the tide there. Aranis had his opportunity to go too clear for the first time in the match, but passed it up. And Coe was drawn level. 
Looks like we're heading for another close one, Jeremy, for all. Yeah, it's, we talked about it yesterday. You know, we had a 9-1 Shaw and Co, right? We had another 9-5, I think, a couple matches there early, but the suspense, the quality, and of course the score lines, they get closer as the match goes, as the event goes, excuse me. is very much promoted, I think, by the decision on the purple five. And there's the really acute cut on the eight. And after making that, deserved to have a simple nine, and he did. I think we should just start these Take matches at 10 all reckon. because <laughs> we don't seem to be heading that way at the moment. Yeah, and Co lost his break last night. He really hasn't found it here in this semifinal so far, anyways. And the green six is going to slide, but it's not going to go in. Three dry in a row now. And Copenhagen. Yeet. We're going to get to see a big draw stroke here, maybe. Not sure if he can just draw this back and take the cut on the three from the center of the table. Not so sure what the black eight is doing as far as interfering in that manner. The three six combo isn't tough, just in case you had to play it, that being the red three on the green six. Extension, please. It looks like it's a little bit of a dangerous angle to draw all the way back to rail where he's standing and then up for the three. Oh, it's a pretty comfortable shot there. Just like today, he was a couple of racks behind early on yesterday against Viktor Zelinski. It's 3-1 down, but he then won eight of the next ten racks to lead 9-5, and his Polish opponent, who was very much the favorite going into that, that match, was just falling apart before our eyes. And all of a sudden, Zelinski won four in a row, including a couple of golden breaks. Aranas led again at 10-9. Went hill-hill. Got over the line 11-10. But back in the present day, he's passed up another opportunity. Yeah, it wasn't the clean strike on the cue ball we've been seeing here so far for James. A little, little slappy. Not 100% guaranteed, but it would be very surprising if Co didn't regain the lead here. You know, the old break shot, you would change speeds a lot, but really not change the break too, too much as far as it was always just kind of head on. And I wonder how many different breaks the players really are practicing these days uh, with the new break format, just in case, you know, one type of break kind of goes awry, right? You change sides, that's the typical change, but do you really change the overall break, you know, itself? Because he's really struggling on the break. Seems to be picking up the speed after the break, but... You'd be the man to find out. The player's always willing to tell you everything. 
so you can go and conduct a survey for us later. All right, coming three rails here. It looks like the rail speed, and that's what happens as the cloth gets broken. The rail speed picks up a little Extension, bit. Extension, please. If he's going to win this semi-final, you have to feel he's going to have to improve on the break at some point. But for now, he is leading. Open Yi takes two in a row and goes 5-4 up. Thank you, Thank you, it's rack number 10. It's the second semi-final of the World he's Pool Masters. Five, five, swinging six. one way and then the other in the early stages. Little shifts in momentum. Open Yi has it at the moment, winning the last two racks to lead 5-4. But he's also had three dry breaks in a row now. Can he correct that here? In rack 10. Well, the answer is yes. And the overall result, pretty good, Jeremy. Yeah, absolutely. And if, if you didn't pay attention, you'd miss the blue two hanging deeply in the lower right-hand corner. Got the one down. barely get out about probably a third of the blue two so very difficult to control the cue ball from this situation the three's fairly open in the middle though that being the red three looks a lot of times you want to still kind of draw the ball off of this trying to avoid the the point on the pocket as much as you can he rolled it and and he played the spread on the cue ball with the slick felt. Very savvy shot there from Ko. I could cut this in the side or the corner, I think. I think the side's the play. Just got to contain the cue ball speed. Hold it for the cold. pink four that's just kind of wedged between the green six and the brown seven. Should be the middle, maybe a hair of inside spin. Ko Ping Yi will be teaming up with his brother, Ko Ping Chung, as we see this again. Once more at the World Cup of Pool that we mentioned earlier, next month in Spain. They got to the semi-finals last year. Copenhagen has won that in the past. Back in 2015 in partnership with Chang Yong Lin, the same year that he won the World Nine Ball. Yeah, what a partner he had there. And of course his brother, another great partner. And I think they're probably one of the favorites come next, next month there in Lugo, Spain. Especially because it seems that his younger brother, Ko Ping Chung, has gotten his game back. He really struggled at the World Cup last year. But the man on your screen just played an exceptional pool to carry him as far as they did. We were talking, I think it was you and me anyway, and Leicester at the Premier League, about sporting siblings and we agreed that probably the Williams sisters were the most famous, but are there any instances in American sports or things that you know more about of three siblings from the one family all playing to a high level? Oh, I'd have to think to think about that one for a moment. I think there were the Wallace brothers in uh, football here in England who all played top flight football. It's only one I can think of. Yeah, the DiMaggio brothers, I guess. Open Yee, who was two ahead at 2 0, restores that double rack advantage at 6 4. Now we've been talking about some of the events coming up in a very busy summer of pool. And there you see the World Cup that we've been talking so much about. Spain winners for the first time last year. They now defend on home soil. 
And just before that, in the same venue, the Spanish Open, a new addition to the ever-growing matchroom calendar of big events. UK Open was staged for the first time last year. Joshua Filler won it. He'll be at the Copper Box down in the Olympic area in London to defend it. That all starts on the 30th of May. And that's only part of the story. We've got US Open, Asian Open later in the year. Yeah, tons of pool, and I'll tell you, there's a couple more Spanish players that uh, maybe owe David and FSR or Cerveza or something, right? Because the home team, right, gets two teams there in the World Cup. Yeah, and the thing is now Spain can name two strong teams. A few right. years ago, that wouldn't have been the case. Awesome. Ball in hand. The one did go on the side, but you can just see the the breaks haven't been anything off. consistent. Even there with the one on the side, not a lot of opening of the rack. makes things easier but this is not a tough layout get on the three easily the four the five the purple five and green six are there together a little work from the seven to the eight going with a high ball here I guess he's just it's a little surprising to go into the balls there it makes a little sense but still a little surprising so Joe DiMaggio had two brothers who played baseball as well. I, I think so, yeah. I have to say, I had no idea of that. One the, brother, I think, was a very good player, but Tom, Tom DiMaggio, maybe. Oh, the Neville brothers who were uh, famous footballers here in England. And they have a sister, Tracy, who I think it was netball she played to a high level. So there's another. Extension, please. Something tells me there's a, there was another triple for in the tennis ranks at some point. But Probably, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Those Nevilles I mentioned there, their dad, his first name was Neville. Yeah, Neville Neville. We had a great pool player from America we lost not long ago named Larry Neville. Played in a lot of big events. Big powerful stroke and thinking of that, he's got to force this one a little bit. And we saw Coe cut a very thin eight ball in, so maybe he can just hold here on the purple five to take a thin cut on the six. This is all about speed control because you got to believe he's going to flick this in with a little right spin. Don't think the side pocket's a worry, but maybe coming on top of the seven, maybe. Well, he needed this. He had lost three racks in a row. Coping the scratch on the break gave him a chance. And will it be the start of yet another of these little shifts in momentum that we've seen throughout the contest so far? seen from him is that even though he's spoken about the nerves he's been experiencing in this tournament and the fact that he's up against much bigger names generally over his first two matches he's 
responded really well when the winning line has come into view. He's finished his matches very strongly. He had his only two break and runs of the match against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz right at the end to go from 7 all to 9 7. And then he held his nerve brilliantly yesterday, really, when Victor Zelinski had come charging back at him. Albeit that Zelinski had been helped along by a bit of good fortune with the two golden breaks. So he's got nothing to fear from getting close to the winning line here and a place in tonight's final. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, prior to the event starting today, or maybe it was right at the beginning of the first match, I was upstairs and in the players' lounge, and there were four of the players in there. And, you know, they are all very honest with each other about admitting that they were all nervous here this week and just how much this title means to them. Of course, then we got on the Moscone talk, and there is no comparison to nerves in my mind in any sporting event in the world compared to the Moscone Cup. Oh, he's really unleashing on the rack. May have an edge of the blue, too. We'll see. Doesn't look too disappointed. Yeah, he definitely has the blue, too. He's got to check the ball a little bit. Doesn't want to get too far away from the red three, considering he's got to get all the way back up table for the pink four in just a couple shots. Can't argue with the numbers. Didn't pot any balls from his first three breaks in this match. He's now potted seven from his last three. Uh, he's hit it thick. Okay, it did slide in. And now he's in a prime position to tie this match. He's got some work, but he's got a proper angle on the red three to draw up the table for the pink four. Uh, you don't want to get straight here. And probably pretty intentional on the blue two to carry it a little thick into the pocket. That way you can quiet the cue ball down. All right, choice can go forward with a top left spin, or he can come backwards with a low right, coming two rails out, coming at the purple five with the cue ball. Whatever about the occasion and everything that's at stake, he doesn't seem to get thrown by things that happen in the match. It seems that every psychological question you think he's being asked, he just shrugs it off. Well, that's just his personality, period, right? Very appreciative in all ways, it seems. Always very respectful. And, you know, when you have that kind of attitude overall, it's easier to just, you know, look at what's in front of you versus what's behind you. I think that's what was so impressive with not only Kachi today, but Neil's the entire event. Could have easily just folded right at nine to six after losing nine in a row, having a big lead, and still Pert tried to persevere and win that match. Well, he's overdrawn this a bit, but should be okay. Yeah, excellent Kachi winning a truly unforgettable match earlier against Neil's Fine, 11 10 from six nil down. He's into the final for the first time. James Aranis is playing in the World Masters for the first time. But he may well end up in the final too. They're level again at six racks each. We've already had one hill-hill finish in these semi-finals of the World Pool Masters, and we may well have another one, because after 12 racks, there's nothing to separate Ko Pin Yi and James Aranas. It's six all after the man from the Philippines won the last two racks. First to 11 goes through to face Eklund Kachi of Albania for the World Masters title and the $40,000 winner's check here in Brentwood tonight.
Six wrecks each. hit on the one that we've seen and cue ball rattled out of the lower left corner and somehow escaped oh it got kissed excuse me was it still was a little thin but not as bad as i thought i was gonna say in this race to five essentially now to get to this final michael uh, i might lean towards james as a little favorite just because of the break seems to be improving on his end and co seems to still be kind of trying to find it yeah, well, there's no arguing with that assessment. Cole would certainly have been favorite coming into the match. Wow. Again, how good is that? A froze ball coming backwards from distance. You know how clean that has to be struck? Oh. Now he's going to try and go for a cross side bank on the pink four. The cue ball should swing a couple rails towards the nine. Anything here is don't overhit it. Don't let the start ball start to get in the air. Yeah, really nice. Really starting to look like a player who fancies the job here. Well, oh, very highly skilled player for sure. Saul James, the upside that I kind of recognized was, was pretty tall. He may have to come a funny kind of four rails inside the green six to take a cut shot. I don't think he wants to float this one. There it is. Like, and he's going to get on the good side of the six. Ooh, a little bump, and he may not have a corner pocket. It's close enough to it. He should be able to get the draw on the ball that, that he needs if he goes with a low ball. The blind pocket is always one of the most difficult. So it looks as though it's going to be three in a row and the lead will change hands yet again in this enthralling semi-final. Yeah, if he knocks these last two balls in, probably the run of the match for me so far. He did it so quickly. It'd be hard to maybe identify the quality, but man, there was a lot there here in rack 13. supporters sitting by his chair in the corner of the arena really can start dreaming of a place in the final because he's four away now at 7-6 but why has it, have his fortunes improved so much with the breaking have you noticed anything different the last few racks well I think he's given himself a chance uh, with more speed to make other balls I think I think it's just like anything else um, if you try to control it a little bit, you get tentative. You don't get quite the timing of everything going on. And, you know, at time, it's almost like when someone gets a warning, right? We've seen time and time again, that's actually helped them. And so they don't want to foul. So they 
automatically put a ton more speed into the rack and obviously and usually often start breaking much better. I think yesterday he broke well. I really do. Just he had a lot of dry breaks because the the one hit the side, you know, close to making it so many times. So. Well, the number of times the one was hitting both points of the side pocket and coming away. Right. And our old old specs, as far as the pocket size, I think he would have made the one on all those occasions. But the 14th rack, James now, to break. He's leading the match by seven now we're playing uh, with what I think is professional specs how it should be. And I just want him to be able to see the ball because I know he's going to attack no matter how difficult it is. We're going to get to see another one here on the blue two a little thin but natural position. And the numbers now move on to 12 balls down from his last five breaks. <clears throat> this is all about that medium speed. Cue ball will get up the table somewhere in the position it's in now. I wonder if he was playing the overcut instead of attacking. You've got to believe he was trying to make that. Now he's a smart player, of course. He's going to recognize that, hey, I can overcut this and good chance not give up a shot. So probably did try to make it, just favored the top side of the pocket. Pinyi Yi walking back to his chair with an air of resignation. This isn't the first time Aranis has been ahead in the match. He's never been too clear. Now is the chance. Yeah, there's pressure out there for all the players, but I think sometimes the, the player labeled the favorite kind of puts that extra pressure on themselves. You know, we saw it at the in Poland. As Sufi made his run, right? We saw Alvin Ocean had a little difficulty, some other players. I think maybe, you know, they felt like they were a big favorite in a big moment. It just got the best of them. I think it happened against Aranis yesterday for Zelinsky. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, could have been a little the same for Shane and Co. kind of feeling like whoever won this match is the front runner to win the event. Just kind of stand there with the cue ball. You can come back a little bit and draw the cue ball up the rail. You can kind of just stay there. Maybe go forward a little and come back to the same place and then just come across with the cue ball. Once again, it feels like he's only getting place. stronger as the winning line moves closer. And he's now won four racks in a row. James Saranis leads 8-6 against Copigny in this semi-final. You know, there's no argument against the longer matches, is there? I mean, it's just fantastic. You can have prize money, venues, all these things, but nothing brings prestige and value to a tournament and a title quite like long matches like this. It's been a huge success, this change. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. On, you know, anything to put the players in a better, better, you know, better perspective, better situation, which is going to give us better pool, always more stories. And I think what happens is a lot of people would think the opposite. But at the pro level, I think, you know, if we get the races right, like these numbers we have here at the pool masters, it usually leans towards closer matches. So, yeah. In my opinion. I so, know what you mean. And yeah. it, it shouldn't be that way. It doesn't yeah. make sense. But you're absolutely yeah. right. It does lead to it. And it's borne out by what we've seen here over the last couple of days. And I think more of it. Give the World Championship, the US Open, race to 16, maybe race to 18, maybe play it over a couple of sessions. There's nothing brings prestige to an event quite like that does. Yeah, well, Matchroom's always looking to make it better, so... I think we're to a position now, just like the gold break. There were some talks after so many, right? We think it's time to, by put, eight to six. put so many things in a good place. It's time to have a full season and see what it looks like. Cue ball's been all over the place, but he's not letting up. You got to appreciate that. He's going to get a shot on the blue two down the rail. One of the prettiest shots in nine ball pool, cutting the ball down the rail past the side pocket. And yet again, multiple balls down off a run break. Yeah, he can try and come across and hit the gap between the round seven and the black eight, or he can add a little inside spin trying to track the cue ball a little closer to the red three. He'd love the eight to not be there. It'd just be natural to come across and everything would be okay. When you called it one of the prettiest shots in pool, for the man standing behind us, it's only pretty if it goes in. Yeah, and he decided to add that right side spin, and that always makes the shot a little more difficult. I really didn't expect to miss, no matter how he shot it. Now it looks Extension, like please. Coe's going to have to elevate the back end of the queue into a very small side pocket. So here you don't try to really draw down too much. Just get maybe to the middle diamond to cut the red three. Big one you got to stay still on. side pockets from an angle like that, especially when you have to put a little pace into the cue ball. Extension, please. Another pretty shot. We'll see if he does attack with a high ball. Oh, he can draw this past the side. Oh, this is dangerous. Oh, what a stroke. What a stroke. And that's what Coe thought of that miss on the two. He'd been waiting for a chance. When it came, it was a tricky one. It's passed him by. So much confidence in the way Iran has just played that shot as well a moment ago. Well, that's what I was saying earlier. Don't try to simplify the shot. This has got to go a little bit. I think it will get there. It just, ooh, it slowed mm -hmm. down and now snookered. He tried to get that gap in the middle of the table. When pressure's on, that's not easy. Surprised he didn't kind of one rail stun to the short side for the purple five. I try to kick this in across corner myself. I don't think I kick to the back rail. If I do kick to the bo bottom rail here, I try to make it, give it some pace.
of interesting here. He can't go forward too much unless he decides to go past the nine. Oh, he's going to play safe. Wow. I thought he'd take that on. Michael, I mean, position was going to be a little funny, I think, but. James has got to love this, though, to be able to get back to the table, even if he is snookered. Foul stroke, no contact, ball in hand. Not loving it now, though. And really coping ye. He's got to take this chance. have a break after this game so if he can get out here and cut it to eight seven get that little time out during our break it could could do wonders and ultimately I guess the choice to play safe on that purple five has been vindicated by results yeah of course these players are at the table so they see it best but you're not going to find a Filipino miss many kick shots. So it was a bit of a gamble in my opinion, but. So Moranis stopped in his tracks. Essentially, by that missed two along the side, through the rack back into the balance, and through one thing and another, Co it's culminated in Copeny stopping the Ross. He lost the last four. He hasn't lost this one though. He's now just one behind again. It's eight seven in this pulsating semi-final. When we started at lunchtime, the maximum possible number of racks we could see this afternoon was 42, and it's looking as though we may need all of them to decide our two finalists. Eklund Catchy threw in a hill-hill finish earlier against Niels Fyen from 6-0 down, remember, and only one in it here. James Oranis leads this man, Copenhagen, 8-7. Well, Copenhagen has a very doubt the rack has changed much really Marcel and Des again so good at their job but I think I think Co if he does get back to the breaking end during this match he's got to take a page out of James's book and really just unleash on the rack I mean what what's to lose he's what is that five dry, dry breaks or something I mean what he's doing now isn't working yeah yeah he had a scratch break as well as those ones you see on the screen All right, he can just come across off the yellow one above the blue two. The real difficulty is going to be getting from that blue two to the red three, a little covered up by the green six. The extension, please. There's a little gap over here by that left side pocket to get uh, between the green six and the nine ball. And it looks like he has the proper angle, a comfortable angle to hit a small gap. Well, he decided to come across and certainly can't blame him there. It should be a high ball. Maybe a hair right spin. Go by the black eight for the pink four in the right middle. There's too much angle. He could draw the ball, but looks like a little side spin. You could see the quality, right? When he lets the stroke out, when he's not tentative. I could talked about at the beginning of the match, trying to simplify the shots a little much. A 
been in decent level of finals before. Derby City Classic against Skylar Woodward 2019. Mentioned that Asian Open against Copenhagen last year. But nothing on this scale. The World Masters, one of the most prestigious titles in the game. So much history to it. Caught that a little thick to the pocket. He did want to get nice and straight to draw his cue ball back off the green six. Now this is where he's just got to pay attention. Don't want to fall on the rail. Anything off the rail, he should be doable to get back on the black eight. And again, JJ, he's just shrugging off everything that happens in the match. You look back at the previous rack, he had all that momentum, had a chance to go 9-6, missed that two unexpectedly along the side. But it's like it never happened. Well, that's a big component or, or part of the recipe to get through, you know, high nerves and intense situations. restores his two rack advantage at 9-7 and just looking at the Philippines flag there we should mention as well he will be playing at the World Cup of Pool in Spain next month for the Philippines along with Johan Chua Philippines and China the joint holders of the record for most World Cup wins with three but it's been a full 10 years now since the last time the Philippines won back in 2013 in London Yeah, just all sorry Jeremy go, no, ahead. go, go ahead Mike. I was just gonna say all his body language suggests that he knows how important this is but he's extremely comfortable with it and indeed excited by what might happen in the next 20 minutes or so yeah well you know a good physical leads to calming the mental and vice versa in our game so like I said he's let the stroke out on many occasions right he's, you can hear the crisp strike of the cue ball so and I was gonna ask us has any country assembled more different teams than the Philippines Ooh. for the World Cup of Pool? I'll tell you what, I'll get back to you on that one in Lugo. Okay. I intend to do a deep dive on the history of the World Cup between now and then, so I'll be able to answer all those questions by the time we get there. Can't wait for us. And here ladies put a few racks together at times, so... See what the break brings us. Kind of hit a little flat on that one. That's what happens whenever it's a little flat, a little slappy. You see the balls just don't open up quite as well. Miss the one on the side. Didn't miss it by much. Ends a run for Aranis of six breaks in a row without any of them being dry. Yeah, and he may have to go for the jump here if he has any angle to try and move the cue ball, and he certainly does. Could roll out near the brown seven for some type of kick shot. Wouldn't be the worst, but I like this trying to take it on yourself. evolving I think you're going to see a lot more of that where players realize I have to accept the shot I have to change the momentum in this match can't expect my opponent to give it to me I love that about this game there's no hiding place it forces you through all sorts of things to attack the game please. make things happen yourself thought he's one of the best when it comes to long distance pots 
just always swings with so much confidence. And of course, the commentator's curse. I was going to say, yeah, he had no chance of potting that after what you said. He's by far the more experienced man, but you wouldn't know it from the demeanors of the two players at the moment. We saw it very clearly there in that close up. Yeah, well, if you looked Next at session, it, please. you know, kind of dissected the match. James has done everything to win the match so far, and Co just hasn't put that much together back to back. He's cleaned up a few racks, but not our typical Co. Yeah, I think you've got it spot on, even when at times the winning of racks pointed to him having the momentum. You never felt as you were watching those racks that he had established much rhythm. Yeah, and, you know, we all watch the players, of course. They're, they all have great personalities some characters and maybe shown a few more kind of different faces than I've ever seen from Poe in, in just one match, right? Great shot there and really nice to hold the cue ball in position for the red three. Still a lot of work. I think he's got to he's got to work on that purple five up the table with a real problem ball with the brown seven in the way of the pocket. He's near the pink four so that should be too much of an issue. But the thing about the purple five is not only how difficult it is, but the green six is back down table. So lots going on in this rack. Should come two rails inside the purple five ball. Play it for the lower left corner. Looks like he's very natural here, so I'll just speed control. This is a choice. I mean, you can hit this with a high inside, or if you're more comfortable going low outside, three rails in between the seven and eight, back up for the six. So just a little preference. Most would go with the high ball. Should be his rack now. Just make sure it's switched off, please. Fairly routine last few balls, but the hard work had already been done a little earlier in the rack. And he's one behind again. It's 9-8. How much does Copenhagen's vast experience count for now in a situation like this in a big match? Uh, huge. Uh, I mean, he's been here before, and he's been here before in a situation as a favorite, kind of struggling through the match, but still in it. So I think, again, he's just got to make a change on the break. I think that's really, really, if, you know, you had a caddy or somebody in your corner, I think that's the only thing I would really identify. Making a very nice clearance in the, ra in the last rack and a real must situation. That isn't going to hurt either, but 
we all know how important the break shot in nine ball pool is and none more important for coping Yi than his next. His races to 11 over the last couple of days in the quarters and semis have been fantastic, but it will increase still further when they come back tonight at seven o'clock. Race to 13 to be this year's World Masters champion. And it will be a new winner of the title. The 18 frack, coping you to break. Trading by nine, Rex to eight. He's changed sides a couple of times. I think it's more about really the speed of the break. Definitely put more into it. Oh, oh there. and that's his reward. Oh, Our first golden break of the match. And with that, Copigny, having trailed 9-7 just a few minutes ago, has now made it 9 all. better as well even though the nine was the only one that dropped I don't think you're gonna see him back off but so many of them here over the last few days you're just waiting for it to come along at some point in the match and what a time for it to arrive and it just feels once again like a totally different match to what break it did a few minutes ago Hoping you to break. Man <laughs> now yeah. breaking with a chance to get to the hill this is where James has been very good in his first two matches at the very end. Absolutely. Of course, Co, he hasn't been too shabby himself. You were talking about the mad eyes of SVB last night. We saw them there from KPY. Yeah, that's the ticket right there. And win or lose if he does go on to win this I think that's going to bode well in the finals getting to experience a little firmer break he does have a shot at the blue two very awkward queuing I think a little bit awkward queuing with the pink four there he's going to size it up before he shoots that's normally what he does has plenty of time get a full minute after the break and it goes to 30 seconds Now, it looks like it's somewhat natural as far as the path of the cue ball. Just a little awkward cueing is all. And that's a, a sign of a champion right there. You know, you gotta. You got to just go with what you see, even though you've missed some balls doing that through the through the contest. You just got to keep at it. Yeah, I think he wants the cue ball clean. Don't say a word, Michael. <laughs> Yeah, he just beat me to it. <laughs> Reference to the Moscone Cup and JJ's misfortune about 18 months ago. But let's not go there again. Yeah. One of these days, you and I will get past it. Okay, set up perfectly after a really nice two ball. Now the purple five, you can see the green six in the side, the seven near the eight nine to finish just a little stop shot Yeah, a little 
will light up his mark. He's, you know, in a great situation, but normal times he'd be a little upset about that, but feeling good. He had the early combo in rack two, obviously the golden break in the rack before this one. And this is only the second time he's done it like this from the break and run through them all. And by doing that, somehow he's first to the hill at 10-9. Just two completely different semi-finals today. We had the enormous swings, six in a row, then nine in a row, and then obviously the late drama in the first one. But in this, neither player has ever really taken a firm grip on it for a sustained period. We're seeing two different sides of the game this afternoon, but two equally enthralling semi-finals. Yeah, well put. And I think it's just the break shot mainly that kind of slowed this one down a little bit for the players, but but still very entertaining, a lot of great shots, and the suspense is not finished. Well, Aranis had really got the break under control. He was potting so many balls from the break, and the three dry breaks in a row with which he'd started the match were becoming a distant memory. I think back now to that missed two, when he had the chance to Keep his foot down, press forward, go 9-6. Ended up. Thank you, D20, Frack. Cooper News breaking on the hill, leading by 10 wrecks to 9. Well, I definitely think we're going to get some movement on the 9 of some sort. We're going to get some kind of sweater. Yeah, ended up losing that one. And now he's in danger of losing the match without getting another shot. So much resting on this break. Air speed off, or probably didn't intentionally, just didn't quite unload on him like we saw the last two. He's got, a, again, one of the shots. I don't want to jinx him, but one of his his better shots, the thinner cut going up and down the table with the cue ball. And it really sets up the rest of the table with the three so open, the red three. So this should be uh, just a straight ball, maybe a hair of right spin. You can see the gap between the brown seven and the red three to track the cue ball. Probably some 15 feet up and down the table. I think he's got to shoot here. I mean, he's got to take a chance. And like we talked about, go ahead and do it himself instead of depending on the safety. So we cut it. He's going to get a big roll. Very big. Roll. James, though, again, he's got to feel good to get at the table, though. And this is the type of kick. It's just one rail off the right side rail. This is the type of kick shot. When they hit it, they make it a little more often than you would suspect. The extension, please. Yeah, the last time Aranis was at the table, he was leading 9-7. Yeah, and this is the type of kick shot to where you want to put more speed. Maybe you get lucky, but you can lose accuracy that way. So I think it's about medium, high English, maybe a hair of left spin. Could fit a playing card between that cue ball and two ball. And What an anticlimactic way that would be and please for start his again. World Masters Odyssey to end. Okay, ball in hand on the blue two obviously makes that and the red three easy. The extension, please. But position on the pink four can get a little tricky. So this first shot on the blue tilt two tells us a lot about what's going to happen the next few shots. Could 
just kind of ease past the brown seven. Looks like he got above it enough to come a high ball and come down the right side of the table for the pink in the lower left. Morales wondering if the next time he gets out of that chair is going to be to shake the hand of Ko Pin Yi. Desperate to just get one more chance. It's out of his hands now. Watch outside pocket. Wow. It's never easy. The first game and the last, they say. And now he can't really level out so easily unless he wants to apply some side spin, whether that be a bit of right or left, to come inside the purple five or around it. Doesn't want to go natural and just run into the purple five. Oh, what a confident stroke at a big moment. That's a sign of a true champion there, Michael, applying that inside spin with so much speed coming up and down the table in such a big moment as well. And if he pots these next five balls, he'll be one match away from becoming the champion here in Brentwood. <coughs> There's so much more to come from James Oranis. He's had a week to remember. He beat the best player in the world on his World Masters debut. Yeah, of course, always a fun player to watch, but you really got to appreciate the effort and the fight battling through everything he's done this week and everything he's dealt with. Yeah, for a long time this afternoon, it looked as though Oranis was going to reach the final at his first attempt. But let's shift the focus and the credit to Ko Pin Yi. He was leading 6-4 in this match. He lost the next four racks. Later, he was two away from defeat at 9-7. The golden break nudged him along the way in his attempts to turn it round. in jubilant moods, he's beaten James Aranis 11-9. And he'll be back here to play Eklund Kachi of Albania in the World Masters Final at 7 o'clock.